Hey everybody, it's Carl. We're back here in the shop working on Shelley's 165 mod. We changed the rear skid frame in the last uh, episode, so we saved about 15 pounds there. One of the next steps we're going to do is change the jack shaft, and we're changing this actually over to more skidoo parts. And this is right out of the 600 uh, RS, which is a snowcross sled. The reason why we change this is there's two different cams that are in the back of here and it just makes it easier to get in and work on it if you have to. Be very careful, make sure you don't harm the seal. There you go. When you do change over to the 600 RS jack shaft, the engine mount here gets changed as well. So we've started to transition some of the titanium bolts inside of the engine compartment. We'll do the rest of them on the next episode. Um, we're retapping because we're, we're going to a treated aluminum fastener here. So definitely very aggressive as far as weight savings go. These threads are made with a, I would call a Stover style bolt, which is kind of a triangulated thread. They usually call it a Stover nut, which is a, actually a nut that um, is, lo is like a lock nut basically but it's triangulated. The reason they use this Stover style bolt is because it's, it's efficient as far as the assembly line goes, without a doubt. It uh, is the fastest and it's adequate, but it's just a steel bolt. You know, we're, gonna, we're really going after every single, every single gram or ounce, however you wanna look at it, that we can get. So we got the chain case all sealed up. Um, I think I put it together right. I put the bottom gear on the top. That way it goes super fast. Put the chain case in upside down actually. It's like putting on the belt inside out, not just backwards. For sure you get the whole shot. Now we're gonna go back to, where I'm gonna install some of our lightweight hardware in the steering. So we're kind of, kind of all over the map here on uh, what part of the sled we're working on. I don't have all the bolts yet for the bottom of the case, so I'm not going to take the engine out on this one right now. We should have those in a week or so. But I do have all the hardware for the front, and it's actually pretty substantial change. This is pretty light, whizzy, experimental. But this stuff is actually used stuff. Sorry, this is the used stuff. And this has um, 3,200 kilometers, I think it has. I'd have to look back in the thing. So that's probably like, uh, I don't know, let's say 22, 2,500 miles or something like that. Maybe 2,600 miles. But everything looks like it's still in pretty good shape. Um, there's no real wear on it. so. I'm gonna run it because I want to see when it's gonna fail. So let's put it in and check it out. For sure, there's most likely some durability that you're giving up, but if you're gentle on the snowmobile and don't abuse the living daylights out of it, then you'll get away with it. So this is Shelly's foot though. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking, my thought is, if she has a lighter sled, she'll be able to handle it better, longer. So that's really, we find, you know, a lot of customers, it's the, at the end of the day is when people have these little mishaps. And it's because they're tired. You know, and sometimes it's not that the day is long from over, you know, and this is kind of a, it's kind of with a lightweight, at least then it lengthens your riding time too. You can make about 55 horsepower per cylinder if you just clean up the gaskets in here. They're, us they're usually a really uh, close, fit. This one has a tiniest bit you could shave here. That's pretty much splitting hairs. Hardly worth doing, but 
If you do 10 things that are hardly worth doing, they add up to something. Grr. Not like 25, but 22.5. So we got tie bolts for the Y pipe. Why is this? 035. And these guys. So we'll go like this. 3.8. So the airs are just slightly lighter. They're gonna fit in about five minutes, I'll tell you that. There's nothing you can't fix with a die grinder. So here's the difference in the bolts. We have a stock one, titanium one, dimensionally exactly the same, just half the weight. But I would always install the stock one and torque the clutch to the factory spec and then pull the stock bolt out, then put your titanium one in. Also, we change all the non-structural non-structural um, bolts that hold the hood on, the belly pan, stuff like that, to an aluminum, and they're short too, so they don't stick out past the threads in the bottom. There's two ways to do the cover. This one looks a little rugged, but this was a stock cover cut for the team, and then you can still keep your belt temp sense, or you can just utilize the 600 RS clutch cover, which also works. So close, close to what it's gonna be. Should we move that thing over to here to do it? So we still have all the titanium uh, engine bolts to do yet. And there's a few other little odds and ends but this is with the race hood, um, the factory RS race hood, the factory RS uh, clutch, the Nextech carbon fiber skid, Diamond S titanium can, and a good assortment of our CKMP bolts. So we were 537 and we're at 492. We have a little bit more homework to do. We have some uh, other cool parts we're working on. That'll be more aluminum and titanium. Um, and we should be able to get down to the, like uh, I would really like to get down to the 480 pound mark of full of gas, full of oil. You got your Lynx brackets on there. The, spare belt, ready to go, ready to ride. So Shelly's sled here, we took off 45 pounds and we went from a 154 to a 165 and still shed that weight. I think we did a pretty good job in a pretty short amount of time, but there's still some stuff that I'd like to do to this yet. We still have all the titanium hardware for the motor and we have a few more tricks that I think we can get a few more pounds off this yet. Stay tuned and we'll see what we can take off. Thank you.